and the other danger is the danger of disorder and uh, steering away from these two polarities between order and disorder meant that one would absolutely not do a scheme which is contextual which in other words takes the historical traces as given and reinforces them or, or deals with them on one hand because we are talking about uh, really the GDR planning the kind of failed utopia uh, with hundreds of thousands of massive units uh, which cannot really be taken as a, uh, a reliable context for the future. And on the other one, of course, to steer away from that master planning notion, which is the tabula rasa, the erasure and uh, planification of the area by abstract series of uh, parameters. Uh, the winning scheme, I should say, is a scheme which did the latter. It's, it's a completely sort of a cleans the area out, sets up a, uh, a, a grid and 13 equal height uh, skyscrapers. Uh, what I felt was very important and became very controversial in the competition is that one should not tear a single building of the DDR down. Now, not because they are aesthetically, architecturally beautiful, not because they are important uh, in themselves, but because they first of all represent tremendous uh, uh, population, habitation for uh, hundreds of thousands of people in the city. And second of all, of course, because I believe that the development and transformation of urban space has little to do with ur urban demolition and with uh, uh, that kind of a thinking that has already been tried in other cities and has failed. Uh, so uh, the attempt in this uh, in this work was really to to uh, to blend uh, sometimes in a parasitical and sometimes in a reinforcing way the existing and the new in such a way of course that one could not really recognize any longer either the context nor could one recognize a new plan so to, so to speak a new uh, plan uh, the goal of such a scheme would be to uh, to make the city into an openness which would be uh, uh, which would be verifiable by unexpected events in the future rather than closing it into a total planning scheme which is of course to be realized within the next 30 years that's the aim of the competition that within 20, 20 to 30 years the winning scheme would be realized uh, Well, that's that's really uh, what I have to tell you. I mean, I have slides. I, I think these are not conditions uh, conducive to to uh, to uh, meditative conversation. But but I just wanted to tell you what I'm involved in because uh, I think it's very important uh, to think about the city uh, neither uh, in terms of what it was nor in terms of what it, w what it will be. And that is the attempt here in a very practical proposal, which uh, had with it, of course, all the realistic uh, givens of uh, the investment and the political forces, uh, the constellation of political forces in Berlin. Uh, we, of course, met uh, all these uh, requirements and, in fact, uh, went beyond them by suggesting that the city need not look for other areas uh, for development, but can uh, exploit and develop areas which are right now already there. The discussion is uh, still going on. Uh, I think the mass of citizens in Berlin, particularly from the eastern part, uh, have come out in great support of this scheme, particularly because, of course, uh, when they come to look at the, the, the master plan, they see, they want to look where are they, you know, where is their house? And in the new scheme, actually, in all the four final entries, their houses are really not there. They're sort of blocks of a new order. And I thought really that, that uh, uh, these houses constitute no obstacle to a transformation for the better and betterment, gradual betterment, uh, of the place to live and the place to be at Alexanderplatz. Uh, one has to understand that Alexanderplatz is, uh, as I try to say here, uh, the center of Berlin. It's the center of the people of Berlin. In 1927, uh, Alfred Doblin, uh, the famous writer who wrote, wrote Alexanderplatz, said somewhere in one of his uh, books that you know, he's on Alexanderplatz, and over there in the west, they've got the Kurfürstendamm and the zoo and all the nice shops, but he here at Alexanderplatz is the proletariat, and indeed this is the case today. This is uh, where the massive uh, population of Berlin lives and where it extends along Karl Marx Allee towards Marzahn and the new developments of the DDR where hundreds of thousands of inhabitants of Berlin continue to live. Uh, 
the point was really simple, that, uh, that a sensitive and gradual transformation has far more radical implication on the city than an aggressive erasure of history and manipulation of history. And I call it really the traces of the unborn, because it is really from all the things that were ever unborn, and Alexander Plotz, I think, is the ever unborn. You know, there were already four competitions. The Barons competition, the two buildings of Barons that you know, which, by the way, were, uh, were already talked about when Mies van der Rohe and Le Corbusier were in the office of, of Barons and Gropius, uh, was not the first competition for Alexander Plotz. And of course, all the winning schemes along the years, uh, the Lukhart brothers, uh, the Mies van der Rohe scheme, and so on, have, have been a sort of a continuing unfolding drama of the impossibility, in my view, of, uh, of imposing on Alexander Plotz a form which it cannot have. And the reason it cannot have it because Alexander Plotz is uh, not a uh, mental uh, construct of the mind. It's really the gate beyond which Berlin begins to be represented uh, as a sort of mirror to that center, which is very close to the city hall and all the, the spray ins all the representative buildings. But uh, I cannot really go into it uh, in depth. I, I want to tell you that, that this is an extremely controversial um, uh, stance that I've taken. Uh, I have been attacked uh, by the architects, uh, particularly, for taking the stance, but supported widely by, uh, by newspapers and, and uh, many politicians who represent uh, particularly the, 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 the GDR, the former GDR. And what will happen on the site, I think, is really not knowable. Uh, there, there must be some acknowledgement that these events, for example, the displacements of population, will not really happen in the foreseeable future in any case. Berlin uh, and, and Germany does not have the money to be able to, to, to duplicate the, do, do, that housing of Karl Marx LA and everything that belongs with it. Uh, so I think there is still, um, just to inform you, a, an ongoing and, and very controversial discussion uh, because the decision has been taken to implement the, the, the kind of Cartesian scheme, I would call it. And it is Cartesian. It's very similar in its logic to, to the Voisin plan uh, of 1920, although it looks like our deco skyscrapers. Uh, we know that this is uh, not going to be possible because uh, with the heterogeneity of investors uh, from all over the world, uh, one will not be able to legislate, uh, at least I don't think one will be able to legislate successfully the form of buildings. And I have attempted in this work, and, and I cannot really int introduce it any further in this context, I, I have attempted to, to make it open and extremely, uh, extremely kind of disconcerting without ever uh, having the scheme uh, unstructured. So it is structured, but in a different way. And uh, of course, it's the controversy of what is order. And uh, the senator of planning, Senator Hasselmann, said to me that he supported, uh, he does continue to support the scheme, but he cannot see how to realize it, because there is an intertwining of these layers of new buildings and new streets, while the old streets continue to exist. For example, that strip on Karl Marx Allee, which you didn't see because the video didn't go far enough, uh, is built with within all existing spaces that uh, are, are now open. So there's nothing that, that uh, is manipulated in the scheme which requires any constructivist approach to the city. Uh, well, that's, I think, the question. I think the question is also being asked in other cities, in, in, uh, particularly in Europe, but also in other East German uh, cities. I was in a symposium in Magdeburg and one in Dresden just a couple of days ago, and the same questions came out what should be done with these uh, cities. And I think the overwhelming answer in Germany today is they should be eradicated. One should really get rid of uh, you know, the last, basically, two generations of buildings. Uh, one should simply start all over by imposing on these sites a new logic, which is, by the way, not the post-war logic of, of Germany, but the, the, pre, uh, the, the, the really pre-war logic, the, the, the turn of the century uh, notion of planning, which is to legislate that all building heights and all images would be controlled through planning and through, um, through a kind of vision of the future, uh, which, of course, I'm against because I think that, that Germany faces, uh, as do other European cities, the problem of its own future, uh, which is, uh, of course, intertwined with its past, and the past is not even the past because it hasn't, it's not over.
that's all I had to say about uh, about uh, Alexander Platz. It's a vast competition. I think every drawing uh, in, in our, uh, well, w the required drawings are about as big as this wall because they are at one to 500 and uh, and they have to show tremendous uh, parts of the city which, which where these irreconcilable elements come together. For example, traffic together with housing, together with uh, tremendous office uh, planning and uh, retail and shopping uh, requirements which are staggering, probably the, f the, 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 the highest density in Europe will be in that spot. Uh, and uh, finally, I think it's, it has to do a lot with the image, uh, because the image of the, all the four final entries, uh, except for mine, was that this should be a quiet place enclosed by architecture, right? So it's a place like a kind of a piazza enclosed by buildings with streets radiating from them, having shops and offices and housing somewhere behind it. And I thought that the planning of Alexander Platz should aim to uh, not to close it at all, to try to make it as open as possible. And that's not only spatially open, but also functionally open to vertical dimensions in terms of the uh, subway and uh, subway connections and tram and, and car connections and vertical uh, circulation to make it as open as possible because I believe that Berlin will need, uh, as many cities, as all cities I think, will need to be open to transform themselves in a still less predictable way in the future. Uh, well, this is a bigger issue, and, and uh, we are all sort of relatively young. You're younger than I am, but I think uh, you'll be around for at least the next 20 years to see how this experimental, uh, uh, this experiment with architecture and humanity in Berlin will uh, will develop. And I, I believe that uh, it will not succeed in imposing uh, this new plan. That it will have to revert to my uh, to my plan, <laughs> uh, it, even if it's, it, it is involuntarily, uh, because uh, I think the pressure will be such that that it will veer towards that uh, kind of madness of, of of mixing all the metaphors and all the structure connections into a totally uh, different uh, way of looking at them that's kind of the beginning I, I, I uh I don't know what else to tell you without really showing you the drawings, but, but this, this, these are not good conditions to, to show you these things. And uh, uh, if you have a chance, uh, I, I, I hope, uh, you know, if you're in Berlin, I'd love to show you this, this huge model because it's, 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 uh, it's really, I, I felt that, that you can only win a competition with a model. Uh, and I was actually right. Well, the, the first uh, prize was determined, I, I should say, really politically uh, before the competition. It's a project that has been in discussion for at least a decade uh, in Berlin. And, uh, but, but to steer uh, at least to another idea required, I think, making a tremendously uh, big model and as students of architecture you might be interested in this, uh, technically, how does one make a model which is completely fixed and finite, shows every window and doorway, but at least is totally changeable by people's imagination. And that was uh, my effort uh, in this model. And I think it certainly works because we had no friends on the jury uh, to, to, to uh, have it recognized. And yet uh, I think it was an inevitable momentum that, uh, that had to sway the jury, uh, particularly because of the investors on it uh, and not because of the architects or planners on it towards this uh, view of the city. I'm, le I'm ready to answer any questions about this, uh, but you know, it, it's not really about this because uh, you, you haven't seen it, I haven't been able to present it. Uh, there are massive sections and, and uh, certain very, very conventional drawings which are very, very clear. There are no diagrams. I have presented no diagrams. Actually, I was the only architect not to present any diagrammatic uh, forms like how it works. Just a vast model, which is almost half the size of this room, uh, where people can uh, point and say uh, where they are. Uh, and where uh, there is enough of a factor of recognition and transformation at work, which makes you at once find where you are and also lose it uh, pretty quickly. That was the aim and uh, that's the result. I'm only reporting it now, uh, I hope uh, in a fairly sober and uh, objective manner. Uh, I have a few slides. Uh, is it worth, uh, you think, looking at some? Okay, let's, uh, let's see, maybe they're better than the video. Okay. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, can we... Uh
That, that was actually, uh, that's actually the plan of Alexander Plotz, uh, literally. Uh, it, it's not my hand, it's Alfred Doblin's. I found his right hand, uh, his left hand. It's his left hand. And, and I found this, this thought. He said that when it comes to Alexander Plotz, and, and you'll see this statement in Alexander Plotz, the book, you'll see it in everything that, that Alfred Doblin ever wrote, uh, which said that if you want to know what Alexander Plotz looks, look at my left hand. And uh, you, it's interesting because Doblin was a doctor, a medical doctor. You know, he, he only was interested in the city, but he, he was interested f from the medical point of view. Next one, please. Okay, this is the, can you focus this? This is the required one to 500 model. Uh, uh, sorry, one to, yes, one to 500 model. And uh, maybe you recognize that the city hall here, that's the big place, and that is Karl Marx Allee coming from the east over there. And the competition site is all that kind of middle area, not only the tall buildings, but even behind where some of the lower buildings are. Uh, next one, please. Uh, that's uh, the basic uh, so di you know, concept, really. The, 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 gr the huge green park, this linear park that would connect the parks in the east with the spray, a gigantic uh, park which would also serve as a buffer zone between the housing and uh, the, the, the gear and set of gears within this of the high buildings. The, 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 sort of the, the red uh, pieces are the... Uh, interaction between uh, the inevitable tall sites and of course each of these sites already has an architect and each one of these sites has an investment uh, plan so this is not an abstract diagram. Next one please. Next one. Uh, just, just for your information where you are, you are at, at Karl Marx Allee coming here from the east and you are in the Scheunenviertel, which is the old area of Berlin. And uh, really, this is a zone that lies uh, like a knot, as I said, between the Karl Marx, the, the, literally the east and the old Jewish area, the, the poor uh, East European Jewish area, which is Scheunenviertel, which is still uh, relatively intact. And Alexanderplatz, of course, is that big marching field. And it was, of course, from the very beginning, a marching field for for, you know, for the Tsar, for the Prussian soldiers, and it's continued to be a marching field and a traffic field. Uh, it's, that's its role outside of the city gates, which occur right here where the train, the Bahnhof, Alexanderplatz station is. Next one, please. Next one. Can you see this at all, or? Okay, that's that median, that median strip, that's the Karl Marx Allee as I have sort of gradually transformed it from this big open Allee into simply building in the median, in the median between the two streets, leaving the traffic as it is going today. To the north you see, uh, and to the northeast you see kind of massive developments. Uh, on the uh, western edge of Schoenfertel, uh, a kind of uh, a gateway uh, corresponding to the Karl Marx Allee. And of course the most important thing is Alexanderplatz itself with its a series of shops and buildings uh, having uh, their own character, the barons and the, the, this media circus on the southern side of the railway. Next one, please. And, and big department stores, the one here, the Hertie department store, the Kaufhof and, and other large department stores which are uh, part of the program. Next one, please. This is a close-up of the typical uh, floor plan uh, of Alex uh, around Alexanderplatz. And the wedge, which I call the Euroform, is the one uh, I recommend that, even though it was not in the competition, uh, that there should be a public, uh, a public uh, some piece of the pub a public building on Alexanderplatz itself, which I thought could, uh, should be the town hall, because the town hall of the Mitte, of the center of Berlin, is actually looking for a place. I thought it would be not there would be nothing more logical than to put the Mitte town hall uh, on Alexanderplatz because that is really where you come to ask about apartments and about uh, laws and what's happening to your property. That's that Euro Forum wedge. Uh, and then there is the, the, the window, the, the fence, the fenster, and the rock, and the Forum Hotel. By the way, the Forum Hotel is an existing hotel with this uh, tail and uh, Kaufhof with this Odessa edition, which is open shopping, open market, uh, uh, f uh, you know, in vertical sense. So you're seeing a blending in you cannot really read exactly where the old buildings are and new ones, but it's all together in this close-up. Next one, please. And uh, here is the actual 
space, open space itself and how it moves uh, sort of around uh, around. Uh, all these buildings are uh, really part of the competition and more. This is just. Uh, really the focus of the competition, which is after all that empty space, that piece of empty space which everybody is using to, yeah, to, because uh, you have the biggest uh, uh, underground network in Europe. You can get three million people in 15 minutes to Alexanderplatz. Next one, please. Yeah, that's the capacity. Uh, that's a mixture. You probably recognize the Forum Hotel in Berlin, if you've been there. You probably recognize uh, some pieces uh, here. Uh, and the idea here is to build in a kind of triangle to the high point, which is just before the, uh, just before the Karl Marx Allee, uh, veers into the wedge, and uh, to build lower and to stop the development with the Berlin Zeitung building, which is uh, uh, also part of the competition. Next one, please. It's a very detailed drawing, it's just black here. Uh, here you see it better. Can you uh, focus? This is the view along the railway line, uh, looking uh, from east to west, but not along the, only along the transportation route here. Next one, please. <coughs> And this is looking towards, uh, from the Karl Marx Allee itself. The housing, you see that park here uh, going through. Uh, you see in the distance this, this circle, this, this media circus uh, in front of the railway. You see the big Hertie department store, then the tallest uh, uh, set of buildings here, and, and an edge. By the way, these buildings, these tall buildings incorporate uh, the old buildings, like the house des Lehrers, the house of the teacher. Uh, can you recognize it? It's here. It's here. This is an existing building, and I, I, I uh, showed in the drawings that one could incorporate these buildings as pieces of uh, these high-rise buildings uh, without the detriment to either the functioning of the new buildings nor uh, uh, to the sort of the, the view of the old. Next one, please. That's uh, kind of the structure. It's an axonometric from sort of running. Uh, basically east-west, east there, west there. Next one, please. Next one. Here you see perhaps better in the close-up. And uh, you see the routing of the new tram line, which is, uh, which I think will be there. You see the Forum Hotel, you see the Kaufhof. That's, by the way, an existing building with, with a transformation or alteration of its interior and uh, enlargement of its, uh, of its uh, uh, image or of its functioning and so on. Uh, next one, please. The wedge, this is this transparent building here next to this very solid and opaque rock building. Uh, which, and uh, this is that uh, vertical shopping extension of the Kaufhof. Uh, by the way, uh, I didn't think that the existing buildings uh, were sick. Uh, most of the architects and planners talked about the sickness of the area. It was a sick area. It had to, you know, radical surgery had to be done. I saw nothing sick about it. I thought the area was kind of interesting, uh, pregnant with a lot of possibilities, and I didn't think that it needed any radical surgery of removing these uh, slab, uh, these Plattenbau housing uh, buildings. And I, I think it actually looks pretty interesting with them. And uh, well, it really doesn't matter whether whether they are there aesthetically or not. Anyway, they can come down and go up uh, in time uh, with with with. Uh, uh, with uh, uh, needs. Next one, please. Next one. Is it, uh, can you focus this, please? The, the, the object on the, the, that is standing on Alexanderplatz, it's, it's a large entrance to the to the underground. It's a new entrance which I proposed to the to the subway. Uh, and, and it's where the famous statue of Berlin stood once, the Berolina, and I made it kind of horizontal in, in, a, in a book of the city uh, with this uh, diagonal line across it, and you're looking at Kaufhof and you're looking from, the, uh, sort of from this uh, uh, eastern uh, street, next one please, towards, towards the Schoenenviertel in, in brown there behind it. You can see the, the different scales here. Next one please. 
and that's this development which is basically retail and offices with some housing along this median uh, median and you can see it's kind of skewed with this um, uh, sort of inner organization which, which is uh, different from the Berliner Zeitung uh, building. So the Karl Marx LA actually doesn't end in, in my scheme. In the, in the older schemes, in the winning schemes, certainly the Karl Marx LA is made in the kind of Park Avenue space. Next one, please. That's a view along Karl Liebknechtstrasse. The rail is here. Uh, you see a lot of existing elevations and so on. Next one, please. And looking uh, towards the, the center, the, the along uh, Grunerstrasse. Next one, please. And, and here you see that median edge, this Alexandrium. Uh, and you see the existing big, the, the big, uh, you can see how big the area is already now. Uh, there are at least three different scales. There's the historical scale of the Barron's building. There is the new DDR scale, which is these, these big buildings here. And of course, it's still the newer scale, uh, which will be now the scale of Alexander Plus. Next one, please. Uh, it's view from the northeast, looking along the tram, the proposed tram, towards the Barron's entrance to the, to the railway. And next one, please. And next one, please. And uh, in my own mind, I think in, in everybody's mind, this really is the key. It's not really so much about what goes beyond this point, but really what is the character of Alexander Platz itself. What, what, what does it look like? What is around it? Uh, what does one see when one stands in it? Uh, what kind of activity takes place in it? Uh, and as you see, I, I kind of left it actually and uh, very open and I did not uh, in any sense suggest Urban, urbanizing it in a kind of renaissance way. It, uh, it's curious that every architect put cafes there and uh, places to sit and uh, to talk and I think this is inappropriate at Alexander Platz. I think it should have no cafes, should you know, sort of just be a place to get out of and get in but it should not really, it's not really a place to, to sort of linger too long, it's to, it's to meet and get out and, and meet and get in. Next one please. And uh, that's the general view with the Forum Hotel, the Kaufhof, uh, the Hertie Building, uh, the railway, and uh, the two scales uh, of the east uh, here and the Schonen Fertile there. I did keep uh, one idea of Barron's, however, that uh, at least when it came to the to the scale of Alexander Platz itself, one should pay homage to that second layer, this one here, which uh, Barons installed in this uh, plan which was never fulfilled because he didn't get a chance to complete it. Somebody else got the commission. Barons actually came in, I think, third, and Mies van der Rohe fifth. So I figured as a second I shouldn't complain. Next one, please. Okay. Should I... Uh, uh, I'm happy now uh, that uh, you saw some sort of a little more civilized images to answer if I can answer anything about the scheme or the approach to the scheme or uh, or maybe you're just too tired and uh, hot. Uh, uh, but uh, really it's a question about uh, imagery, about uh, uh, the pressures that, that cities are under, and in particular the, the idea that, uh, that uh, one should restructure in Berlin the city of the 19th century, which is, I think, the big political uh, move to try to shape the city uh, sort of as a turn of the century idea with uh, 22 meter height uh, buildings uh, and with skyscrapers that uh, really belie their uh, position. So. Uh, Again, the effort is to hide the, the, the tall buildings as much as possible in, in the previous schemes, in other schemes, and not to acknowledge them as coming down into the 
kind of into the place itself. It's interesting because it is a political and ideological agenda, which I think is dangerous to try to reshape the city by choosing a particular history of the city. And that's uh, this, uh, this uh, hybrid that you saw is an attempt to answer or, or, or give an alternative that, uh, which says that one cannot choose uh, the history of the city which one likes. One has to take it all uh, and uh, yeah, one has to deal with it all. So I, I'm not a believer that one could choose you know, some history in, in, in the city and propel that history on since once that history has been forestalled by, de by subsequent development, that history in a sense has been a failed history. And uh, again, my effort has been to show that it is possible on a pragmatic level uh, to deal uh, also and create a space which is, I think, good and, and, and improves the conditions of life without uh, sentimentality. Well, I think it's just a function of what the space has, has historically been. It's, it's as I said, this uh, incredible uh, intersection of forces. And it's not only the collapse of traffic into housing, which we are speaking about, as an impossibility of, uh, you know, Piazza Navona and thinking of, of sitting there, but, but it's a collision of a number of things which create this, uh, uh, this vacuum, which is the vacuum of uh, kind of, and I don't use it in a negative sense. It's a very optimistic, it's a kind of the whirlwind, the center, which is not, I should say, still, but, uh, but empty. Uh, I believe in this emptiness. I believe that Berlin needs a place where, uh, where people can move through in that, in, with those densities. And you will note that during the fall of the DDR, all the mass rallies were held on Alexanderplatz. Uh, Third Reich, the rallies were, you know, all the, the mass always gathers on that uh, one exit out of the city. And it's, the, you know, there are many other exits, like Platz, uh, the Leipziger Platz and Rondell. But this exit is particularly poignant because it was created by entry of the Tsar Alexander into Berlin. And it continues to have that, that's why I said the East-West uh, relationship is played out uh, on Alexanderplatz in that empty manner. And it is the place today you will find uh, Russians and Poles, uh, when they come to Berlin, they don't go to Kurfürstendamm or they don't go to the zoo. They don't go, they come, the only address they know is Alexanderplatz. And you know, Alexanderplatz is in, in, in not, I, I don't think it can be uh, kind of magnetized around an, a core of activity. It, my idea is to, to actually sort of heat up the activity even more in order to disperse vertically and horizontally people out. And I think it works. I think this is, uh, I, I actually don't know what will happen when uh, it's enclosed completely, uh, as the winning scheme, uh, uh, of course, does. Uh, what, what, what transformation that will be and whether this uh, is a good thing. But I, I believe that it should remain empty. It should be totally permeable. Uh, and we are not speaking about uh, sort of either shopping or offices or housing. We're speaking of you know, a million people living next to the busiest intersection. And on the other hand, you have uh, the offices, just uh, you know, families with kids and cars. And that was that, that linear garden, which, uh, which I thought would be a very important new structure in the city, because the city doesn't have a new park. Uh, it has the Tiergarten, which is the old park of, 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 of Berlin. So it, it needs a new park, and I, particularly to, to sort of make some relationship between these people who are living there now and who are going to find themselves next to, I think uh, by the year 2000, there's going to be a, a sort of uh, increase of uh, traffic there, sort of like 150 million times or something. I'm not joking. So uh, yes, that's why I left it empty, to answer your question. I didn't think this was a place to sit down and have coffee. Daniel, when you when you won the competition for the Jewish Museum, you were just you were just on your way to return from Europe for the second time and, and, and return to Los Angeles, right? And, and then you won the competition and you went. And I think what I've observed in, in your work increasingly since that time, what four or five years, is is a sort of. Uh, a certain degree of political rhetoric and a certain degree of concentration. I mean, the fact that you are in Berlin, in a sense, is an alien body, but in a sense, inevitably drawn into certain conversations. And I think that makes some of the, you know, my question really is, is would, would that have been inevitable at this stage in your work? Oh, no. If one remembers you in your London period, or your Cranbrook period, or your Milan period, uh, the projects you made had had internal architectural rhetoric 
but in a sense, if you don't mind me saying, they weren't localized. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, you were an offshore, yeah, offshore yeah. sort of uh, hybrid. Yeah. And yeah. I sense each time you talk, that yeah. more recently, that you are drawn into this uh, pan Berlin conversation, <laughs> even the you know the coincidence of the, of the metamorphosis of Berlin itself. <laughs> And that it is no longer sort of a fancy place pumped in the yeah. money. Well, I, I think it's a good question. I think if one wants to build uh, anywhere in any city, uh, you have to get involved politically. And I think that's, uh, you know, I didn't set out to do it, but, but because of, again, lucky coincidence that I was invited to this competition and made it this far, I had to get involved in issues which normally I thought were really not interesting issues for me, like, like you know, uh, densities of housing and traffic. But I have to tell you, share with you, that I found it extremely interesting uh, to do it. Uh, you know, now I actually am thinking of architecture in, in a different way because I had the opportunity to get involved in it. Otherwise, I would have probably thought, you know, what a ridiculous thing, you know, to design these huge uh, areas at one to 500 vast uh, uh, estates. But I think that, uh, that uh, yeah, I just got involved in it and uh, I take full responsibility for it because I think if one wants to uh, do more than just monuments or, mon you know, bits of architecture and one, if an architect or, or somebody who's thinking wants to have an impact on the city, that is also the level uh, to get involved, because then we are not talking to, to intellectuals or to architects or to aestheticians. We're talking to really politicians and investors, and it's a, it's a, it's a very powerful constellation of money and, and political agenda. And I find it interesting to, to have fallen into this, uh, into this experience. I, I didn't set out to do it. And uh, who knows what would have happened if I uh, didn't come to Berlin. I probably would have still drawing some funny lines in Milan, you know, doing some strange things. But, but now I'm drawing the funny lines in a different way because I understand that it's really not any longer about the drawings. It's about the big, big model uh, which anybody can touch and anybody can say, there is the street. And uh, that's uh, an interesting thing for me. I know that uh, from private uh, gossip that on the jury, some architects, as you can imagine, uh, the architects were very... Uh, much against the scheme, they said, you know, they read the name of Franz Kafka Strasse, and they said, you know, it, it, you know, what is this? Or this is a literary project, and uh, someone explained that there's no literature in it, that you can get rid of all the names, and you still get a certain relationship which which has to do with that uh, name. Uh, what else can I say? Uh, I can say that. Uh, I found out that it's much more hopeful when one gets involved in this process than when one thinks that one doesn't have anything to say about it or do in it. And uh, just from my personal experience, I've enjoyed it. Uh, I, I've enjoyed uh, getting involved in that. I know it's, uh, you know it's different, it's a different task, but, but uh, could I extend that Berlin uh, is reflective of any place that has investment and a lot of building very quickly over the next 20 years? Uh, uh, it's instructive and uh, it changes one's idea of the work. Uh, I, I don't think I could go back again to some of the things that I did prior to this experience. Uh, and not that I enjoy talking to developers or investors. Uh, I can't say that I do. Uh, but I think there is even a possibility in that very pragmatic realm and uh, the senator said to me, so was the Liebeskind, uh, so would you be happy now to get you know, two skyscrapers you know, on this place? And where would you put them? And how could you work with a you know, master plan that we have selected? Uh, these are ongoing dilemmas. I, I don't know, how, how, you know what, what this would mean, you know, whether I would turn into sort of a Helmut Jan. But uh, I, I don't think so. I, I don't think so. I think the issues are pretty uh, clear in my own mind, what it's about. And, uh, I just encourage anybody who is doing architecture to, uh, to not to uh, fear getting involved with these uh, political issues because uh, from the distance they appear to be sort of in in incomprehensible and overwhelming. But I think they are really very easy. Uh, the minute you sort of make a box with windows and say, this is Franz Kafka Strasse, and you can walk on it, and it's a normal building, it meets all the regulations, it's got an elevator core, and so on. Uh, of course, the whole thing is, is it, you know, is it worth doing? Uh, is it, uh, you know, what do you gain by doing it? I think it is worth doing, and I'm fighting against uh, the forces which would reduce the city to uh, a singular uh, and unified image, and I'm trying to make it impossible, uh, at least, for that to happen. Uh, how far I get is yet to be seen. If, you know.
uh, the winning scheme has four models at one to 1,000, one to 2,000, which show the city by the year 2030. You know, white box, uh, white buildings about this big, and uh, uh, it's a fight between models. Four white models at one to two thousand, and one very big model uh, from wood. You know, one is plexiglass and one is wood. One is with uh, sort of light colors, pink and light blue, and one is perfectly white. One has gold and one has uh, gray. And uh, these are aesthetic questions as well, and they are questions of uh, of tremendous, I think, sort of innovative things. So, I don't know whether I answered your question, Peter, but I. I I can say that I, on the way, you find other things and you, you get transformed by, by, by what you do. Of course, in school, these problems look different. To do an urban project in school seems different because you don't have the dialogue uh, with uh, the city and with the developer, uh, with the investor. But. Uh, I was amazed that I, that I got that far because the investors voted uh, for my scheme, all of them. I just needed one more, but the, the, you know, the, the, investors were one, the investors were one vote less than the architects on the jury. Architects had advantage by one vote the invest, of, over the investors. That's how it was structured. Jeff. That, forgive me, but uh, that raises a really interesting question, and that is, the competitions like these, whether they're invited or they're open, uh, are almost entirely determined in the writing of the competition. In, in what? In the writing, writing of the competition. Even though you, among most architects, are well known for not getting the brief too strongly or finding the, finding the strategic point in which not to blend. But, I mean, isn't it involved, another kind of involvement? Uh, not just what you're doing, which I think is important, but also re rewriting and rethinking how we even approach the problem. The problem. I mean, the mix of architects to developers, which was, which was the opportunity for that little anecdote, is also the determining factor for the future of the city. So, how you write that the brief for the competition, or how you. The, 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 it seems to me that an appropriate point for the next stage in architecture is not just to think, what is the most innovative solution to a problem that's been posed, but how do you rethink mm -hmm. those? Well, you asked, I think, the most difficult question is how far can you take the liberty to transform the political program? And I took it, I knew that I went far when I built on Karl Marx LA because that was clearly stated as not to be done. That Karl Marx, and it was not explicit, but everybody understood in the competition that Karl Marx LA uh, is going to be built around as a periphery and as a spine separating the big housing estates to the east and north from Alexander Platz to the south uh, west. Uh, and I felt that uh, that, that was uh, a good move to build on Karl Marx LA, even though it was outside of the car, and I knew that this would get me into trouble, and, and it did. Because people said, you know, if you didn't do that, if, if you didn't, if you didn't do that, it would, you, it would be uh, comparable at least to, you know, not in the image, but in the structure of the scheme to all the other entries. But uh, I, I think I did this because I think it is the right thing to do. I'm interested in what will happen to the city and to the Karl Marx LA, and I think the only way to not to eradicate the Karl Marx LA is to actually do that step historically to build onto it to, or to, to transform it. Uh, I wouldn't say that the task of, our, as I see it, our, is to rewrite the brief because then you just get disqualified. And I've had that experience as well in another competition at our, in Sachsenhausen concentration camp where I did not accept the brief and I didn't win the prize. I got it only honorary, so it's worse than second. Uh, but, uh, but I think what, it's interesting. One has to rewrite it in a different way, and I rewrote it in the image. Uh, that's certainly what they said, what the jury said critically, and I have to share this with you. They said, this image is too good for a planning uh, competition, they said. Th they disqualified it by saying, this image we cannot choose because it's too good architecturally to be realized as a planning scheme. You will need Libeskin to do all the buildings, they said, which is completely not true, because it's only an image of what it might look like when you really get all these architects who are, going to, who are already building them, Helmut Jan, uh, Joseph Kleihus, uh, Mario Botta, I mean, they already have have their commissions, and they are just waiting for the planning permission to build on this uh, planning, according to the planning competition. So uh, yeah, it's a re rewriting uh, in what way, and with what image, with what end. Uh, uh, I actually never expected that I would get such a support from the people, uh, yeah, the people uh, of Berlin.
not people who are in the West because they don't come to the exhibition to see, they read it in the paper, they, for them it's out there, you know, in the East. But the people from the East have overwhelmingly, I think, uh, come in favor of this project. My problem is that they don't have any representation right now in Berlin. <laughs> because all the representatives of the former GDR are now West pro politicians. So, uh, but who knows? There's an election coming out in a few years. Uh, uh, they'll be voting again, uh, and, and Alexander Platz will be, no doubt, uh, still, uh, still in discussion. Since to build these 30, 40 buildings on Alexander Platz will take amazing amount of time, and it depends on the economic, uh, you know, who will really build? Will they build so quickly? What capital will come in there? Uh, will they want to build with granite and punched in windows? Which is, by the way, the suggestion of the first prize. That all the buildings be equal height, all be the same color, and all be uh, built in granite with a certain proportion window, like uh, Rockefeller Center. Uh, but I think this is not likely because uh, I, I don't know who's going to, you know, whether they can get away with it. Now, it could be that they can. You know, the city authorities are pretty strong in Berlin, have traditionally been very strong, and have been able to say what will happen. Uh, okay. Uh, Mr. Kohlhoff, Mr. Kohlhoff, who is a Berlin architect. I should add also that the jury was completely from Berlin, uh, from, you know, there was no, uh, no external juror, which, which, uh, which, uh, made it really a local competition. And to answer your question, that's why I was probably in it, because I qualified as a, as a local. Any, anybody else to just? Uh, the option is uh, very interesting, but I'm thinking about, uh, uh, as you make a new place, a new Alexander Plus, you probably will also, I can imagine, that generate new uh, organizational systems. So probably, can you be sure that the things that will generate, as nature, as nature does, uh, will it um, uh, not be these things that you explicitly didn't want to, to happen mm -hmm. there? And secondly, if things, for example, and I'm thinking of the text uh, by Martin de Masmir uh, in the RD for the uh, Sea Bruges Trade Center of Francoras, that, for example, new situations or organizational systems could happen. Mm -hmm. Are you open for yes. this? Uh, of course, uh, you raise a very interesting question, but it has to do with specific situations. I, I think Berlin, uh, one would have to understand also what is the ongoing uh, problem of Alexanderplatz. This, this, this city, this part of the city, you have to understand Alexanderplatz, in 1923 was completely leveled, basically. I mean, Berlin, let me put it this way, is the only city in the world, the only that I can think of, where you can have a street and a plan will come and they say, let's get rid of the street. Usually in Paris, New York, uh, London, when there is a street, especially an old street, like 200-year-old street or 100-year-old street, you don't get rid of the street, right? The street, even if it's a modern housing estate, kind of stays. Uh, the, the street direction is not altered. Berlin, for whatever reason, I never understood it quite, is a city which continually tr transformed its streets at this location. Uh, it's mysterious why at this place, before the cataclysm of the bombing of Alexanderplatz, which, which was of course the central bombing raid of the RAF, why the streets in 1923 became the biggest uh, alteration of the city? Why did they alter those uh, streets into a kind of a diagonal going towards the east? Uh, not exactly towards the east, but, but pretty close to where Karl Marx LA today is located. So I, I think it has to do with specifics of the city history. I don't think a, a, a thinking that would be adequate to Lille or to Paris would apply in this sense, uh, in this very specific situation. And I believe it has this, I, I hate to use this word, genius look or whatever, it, it has this feeling of uh, you kind of being there and it doesn't matter whether they, they build buildings or they don't build buildings, you'll still be exactly at that place. And that place uh, will continue to have this uh, traffic from east to west. Uh, I don't know why, because people could go through Austria or through Prague or through some other place, but they seem to be going uh, through this particular point of the city and 
really, I just accepted it. I, I, as to the openness of it, of course, I, I uh, showed that it could be open structurally to many other possibilities, but not to an alteration of this fatality. And this fatality has to do with the destiny of a certain uh, of a city situation, uh, which is uh, can be taken either pessimistically to say you have to control the fatality, or optimistically by saying let it uh, kind of happen. It, it'll happen anyway. It, it let it let the let this heterogeneous heterogeneous thing take place in as much uh, uh, room as possible to give it. Uh, that's uh, a tension between uh, creating a scheme which, whose possibility is actually in the past. That's why I call it the traces of the unborn and all those lines I try to work in that particular way like the Doblin hand, which I think is the right uh, idea. You put your imprint of the left hand, not of the right hand, of the left hand, and you've got Alexander Platz. Kind of a leftist uh, Alexander Platz notion, always. Uh, and uh, yeah, nobody actually knows who lives there. You know, who, who lives beyond uh, this town hall? It's, they say the people. And now that I teach also in the East, uh, I've become a professor right behind Alexander Platz, I see that no one has ever ventured there from the West. People go for a tour trip or something, but. Uh, this is another interesting thing about the, the schizophrenia of the city, of any city, which is exposed in, uh, in, in Berlin very clearly and in Germany. And uh, I only want to say that there are tremendous early conservative and neoconservative and reactionary forces all over Europe, but also in Germany, to try to impose this glib choice on a city and to build it as fast as possible into an image. And uh, I am not for it. I, I fear that this would be a, a bad thing uh, if, if, if it will be done. And uh, who knows what will happen. So he, he, yeah, I've, I've got this problem. Um, <laughs> so do I. Yeah. I, I can take this very bitter note in your voice. Uh, I'm not bitter. I'm just, I, I it's a bit hot. Seem to kind of see your architectural vision, but it appears that this competition has been more of a political agenda than one of actually creating an environment for people. Well, that's a fascinating question. You know, the, the difference between the vision and the political agenda. It's a, you asked the best question of all people here. Uh, the, you know, what is the connection between the vision and the political agenda? And uh, uh, yeah, I try to show the connection. Uh, if you don't see it, I'm sorry. Next time. <laughs> uh, I'd like to talk about the relationship between this work and early, your earlier work. Looking at it myself, um, knowing a certain amount of the older work, obviously there's a, a huge sort of difference in scale. Um, and for me personally, that, that, that obviously took the Perhaps a rereading of the earlier work, uh, just suggesting a sort of scale of the the earlier work, and then um, now because of the specific scale of these operations, it's offers a particular way to look at the mm -hmm. and, and Do you have a, a, a relationship position yourself as you know, that the earlier work, which is different now from having worked on the new here, and to an extent this is the edge for a particular mm -hmm. Do you reread that, or do you sort of I don't know how to reply it, but I never uh, was successful to apply my work to a small scale. You know, I've been asked by a number of companies to produce chairs and furniture and uh, objects, and I never, you know, I took it seriously because I would love to do a chair and would love to do a lamp and would love to do, you know, so for Vitra, a whole office system, but I've never succeeded in adapting any of my thoughts to that. I, I don't know, it's my problem. Maybe I should work on that, but I, I don't have much problem uh, uh, here because I didn't make any difference between scale of uh, the architecture and the scale of planning, and I think this is also what is new in this uh, solution that it doesn't allow itself to have a discourse between planning and architecture. Uh, that was, uh, if you will, the, the political vision of this project. To make a project which doesn't allow itself to be zoned into the two realms of planning and architecture, but to create, I don't know, an in-between uh, thing, which ca you cannot really say at what point the large scale 
uh, ends and the small scale begins, or the scale of the plan, so to speak, which can be said legislated in, in, in the B plan legislation, you know, heights of buildings and where to build the plots of land, vis-a-vis -vis where the building's edges have to be and what, uh, where the elevation is standing vis-a-vis -vis the street. And I think this was uh, successful because it showed that one m does not need to do it uh, that way uh, in the sort of separating architecture from planning. Uh, but I don't think there is still a very clear mechanism of how to do it. And the senator of planning, uh, Senator Hassamar, who's an extremely <coughs> progressive and intelligent senator, told me that he couldn't figure out how to do that. He said, you know, you lost because we couldn't figure out, I couldn't figure out as a senator, how to make the law meet this uh, in-between zone. And I said, you know, you just needed help of planners and architects to do it, who were sympathetic then it could be easily uh, divided and dissected because these plots of land, of course, are owned by different people. And every plot of land that you saw there is not a visionary plot of land. It's fulfilling a absolutely given program, which is already, as I said, in the works. It's not uh, waiting for study. Does that mean there's a very like, a close relationship with what you're doing before? The yes. Mac Mac I, I, to me, it is. I, I don't see. Yes. Yeah. I, I couldn't do this if, if I had to uh, sort of invent a, a strategy for working in the city. I, 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 you know, in, in the two months of the competition, you couldn't really do this uh, if you didn't have uh, a background uh, of, of, of investigations. And uh, uh, in that sense, I didn't come to it as a new, uh, as a novice. I, I, I've thought about you know, the microbiology of, uh, of the drawing vis-a-vis -vis the macro structures that, uh, that are you know, connected to this. What's the problem with designing a jet? Excuse me? What, what is your problem with designing small jets? I don't know. I just haven't succeeded <laughs> in doing it. Between this scheme and? I, I don't really know. Perhaps I am, uh, I am more interested in the history of that city than many architects today uh, and many politicians who seem to say that the history is a waste of, that that history, that some aspect of history is a waste of time. That is the message you hear in, in, in Germany and Berlin. Some history has been wasted. We've wasted, you know, 60 years and now we have to uh, sort of recuperate. Uh, and I think you don't waste time in history. There is no waste history, that's one of the fields that doesn't uh, really suit itself to a, a sort of a garbage heap because we are part of the process uh, of that heap. So whether it's because I'm Jewish, I don't know. I think th I, I just am interested in that, in that palmistry and uh, that palm reading uh, of, uh, of the city because I think the unborn is what the city is about and the city is ever the unborn, right? I mean, any city is the trace of what cannot be born in a city or anywhere in its vicinity. And I think only those cities, to my mind, are great who respect that tendency uh, of the unborn. And, uh, you know, we can find places and, and networks where that unborn stands out in its full irrealization. Uh, Berlin is full of it. So, yes, I am sensitive perhaps to it the way if I was, uh, you know, a German, uh, somebody who, who, who had German parents and German background and uh, had grown up in post-war Germany, uh, maybe I would not have this uh, feeling. Uh, but I have to say that there is a tendency now, a very aggressive, uh, imperialistic uh, view within the West Germany to impose on half of the country, which is, we will tell you what to do. And we've already done it, and we know exactly what not to do. And we, what we won't do is the architecture of the post-war. Because that has failed in the West, we don't want you to have it. We will give you the architecture of the original East. And that's, of course, something very disturbing to me, because that was the re rhetorical stance uh, of other planners whose work I don't appreciate much in Berlin, like Speer who said exactly that. And he was, uh, as you know, Leon Creer says, a very good architect. And, uh, and uh, yeah, that's uh, the, the discussion. Your project I mean, has a grand scale to me. Is it, is it a grand gesture, or are you trying to uh, sympathize with these, but these German people? You just said that they have been steamrolled, more or less. Um, I'm just trying to work out where you're coming from. 
uh, it doesn't have any big it, it doesn't have any bigger scale than any other scheme they all have the same scale they're all exactly identical it's not a choice of scale you either are you know I mean of course there were there was one architect in the competition who said we will redo everything and but we'll build three towers only three very very tall towers because we want it to be the old uh, uh, Berlin there was an East architect by the way who in an ironic way did the wrong thing because they rebuilt everything but they also wiped out everything in order to rebuild it again right so they got rid of the housing of the East in order to rebuild the 1920s Eastern part I think this is not a choice the scale of that area of the city is not a choice of the architects it's it is going to be there that's the brief if you don't want to do it you protest and say I don't you know I don't want to do the competition and of course there were uh, discussions of newspapers people say you know should the scale be there of a sky you know should there be high-rise buildings on this spot because they have never been there high-rise buildings I believe that there should be because uh, that's part of the development of the city no uh, uh, well uh, you'll have to see this there will be I'm sure many books and many publications that will show you the schemes uh, they they don't do the success so I think uh, 13 uh, you know 50 story uh, 60 story high rises of equal height don't break up the scale I think in fact they quite increase it in a, in, a, in their own way so but anyway I didn't think that the, the problem was to break you know make the scale smaller not at all it was to clearly uh, show the inherent a contradiction and uh, the irresolution of irreconcilable elements such as housing and massive office uh, structures and conflict of history and I've done it in a what I consider in an optimistic and forward-looking way to sort of bring the city into a better uh, way of living in that area yes well, I mean, the Potsdam of Platz is quite definition And we were talking of the Alexander Platz as a sort of center, which, I mean, I have problems of talking of the center in Berlin because there's sort of, I mean, this is the thing about Berlin, I think that there Okay, I think this is not true. I think this is one of the, I think this is one of the myths perpetrated by this present uh, historical uh, and critical that that Berlin is a polymorphous, polycentric mosaic of interesting neighborhoods and so on. I think this is not true. I think Berlin does have a singular center. It is on Alexanderplatz, and I built it as a center. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks.